Well, we're now going to South Korea where Davielle Wims, a Bahamian student, went to visit her sister and got stuck. She originally, or really, lives in China where she's studying medicine. But since January, she's been in South Korea. We spoke to her yesterday. So, Ms. Wims, you are a student, a Bahamian, studying medicine in China, but now you ended up in South Korea. How did that happen? Um, usually I visit my sister every winter break, um, just to take a break from, you know, the stress of medical school because I study it in Chinese. Um, so when I come here, I stay here for maybe for a month to two months. This time around, the COVID-19 hit and I was not able to go back to China before they had closed their borders. So kind of in a gray area because now the Bahamas has closed its borders and I can't return home and I also can't return um, to China. So it's kind of, you know. How, how long have you been in South Korea? Um, I've been in South Korea since January. I, um, yeah, since January 18, I think. Oh, wow. And, and what part of um, uh, South Korea are you in? I'm in Gyeongsangdo in the province. Oh, okay, um, great. Um, but it's, so, and where were you studying in China? Which um, part of China were you studying in? Uh, my university is the China Medical University is in the northeastern part of China in uh, Xinjiang, Yangming, China. Okay, so it's nowhere near Wuhan. No, it's nowhere. I'm in the northeast. So <laughs> nowhere near Wuhan. Um, 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 have you been able to um, um, find out um, um, how many cases there are in the place where you were studying? Actually, my, my city has a relatively low case. It's, it's actually remarkable. Um, we have about 121 cases, um, give or take. The number could have decre um, increased uh, from the last time I checked, but 121 cases, and most of them have been released because of successful treatment regimen. It must be fascinating for you being a medical student, and even though this is a tragic uh, pandemic, but it must be interesting to um, um, to be studying this, looking at this, from a because um, you're soon to be a doctor. Um, when you, from your doctor's eyes, how do you see this? I, I just see it as a, a chance for basically the doctors all around the world to um, just come together and learn from one another, especially when it comes in terms of treatment regimen and following sort of certain protocol. I think a lot of us, um, a lot of countries actually uh, can learn from what uh, China did or even South Korea did because South Korea really practiced uh, like affirmative and rapid action on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, especially in the city that I'm in. We had like one of the uh, most cases in in South Korea. This is one of the this is one of the hot spots that I'm in in South Korea, and they immediately set up tents. Um, they did rapid testing. Those are the type of things that I think that people who are studying medicine can look forward to. It's better to be um, proactive than to be reactive. But both you and your sister, the your mother and father, must really be nervous. <laughs> they're so nervous. I think, you know, every day they're beseeching the throne of Christ on our behalf. <laughs> it's really, they're really nervous. But I always tell them that, like, um, not to be nervous because where we are is very safe. Korean people or Korean citizens are very compliant to the government's wishes, especially their health with them and should help their wishes because um, generally nobody wants to be infected with coronavirus. So they are very compliant. So and they're very lenient towards foreigners. So it's discipline that you see there? It's all oh, very much so it's discipline. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic struck, every time I came to Korea for the past maybe four years, they've been very disciplined. They stand on lines, they bow and show their greetings, they bow and show respect. So it's very much a disciplined um, environment to be in. Now compare that, contrast that with uh, our Bahamian people that you know aren't that disciplined. <laughs> I, I, I sometimes I'm, I stay on social media because I want to keep abreast of what's happening back at home because I actually haven't visited home since 2015. So I don't want to feel detached when I come back, but I often see that Bahamians, especially the young people in my generation, they're so ready for this thing to be over. They're so ready to just go outside and live their lives as normal. But 
there is a kind of switch in how we're going to live our lives now. It's going to be something of a new normal that we have to experience. And I think a lot of people, especially Bahamians, um, they really struggle with being compliant and being told what to do, although it's for their own good. I think um, Prime Minister of Ministry really, really did a good, uh, he did a good thing when he put the country on a lockdown because essentially it's what Korea did. They rapidly put the country on lockdown, but it's just up for the citizens to be compliant. And I think that's where BS between the citizens struggle the most. Uh, we're hearing about a resurgence in cases again in South Korea, some parts of China. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, I, I think that um, a lot of people are talking about this thing called flattening the curve. But what happens usually in a, a virus, especially an epidemic um, virus like this, there is a peak. But when there aren't um, restrictions and compliances that are being taken here to, then you're going to see a reoccurrence. So there's going to come a recurrence of people who are coming back home. They want to be where their family are. And there are a lot of patients that are asymptomatic. Um, so when they come, they're asymptomatic. And then they infect people with pre-existing um, health conditions or just people who are generally otherwise healthy. So this is where the research and the reoccurrence is happening in China and South Korea, I think. What advice would you give your fellow Bahamians as we deal with COVID-19 here? So far, we've got uh, eight deaths, 49 cases, 712 people in quarantine, which for us is quite a bit. Um, what, what advice yeah. would you give us? Uh, firstly, I would just like to say, like, really, really, I'm really grateful to the essential workers, the janitors, the doctors, the people working in the banks and in the grocery stores. You guys are really doing a tremendous job in keeping the the needs of the population met. But the advice that I would give Bahamians, especially the young ones who are antsy to go out, because I know myself, I'm so antsy to go out. I'm, an, I'm antsy and I want to experience in the world. I would tell them to be compliant. You might not like what um, you're hearing from the prime minister or the minister of public health, but this is what is best for you. You don't need your family members or your friends and anyone of your loved ones suffering from this thing because we can see that it's really killing people and COVID-19 has no, it doesn't discriminate against race, gender, whatever you are, it, it's, it, it's very serious. I would tell the people to be compliant, follow the rules, get what you need, don't buy in excess because you have to consider others, you have to consider the older people, you have to consider people who don't have the means to buy in bulk all at once. Maybe they can only buy something at one time. So I would I would tell them to consider all these things. I know we're young and we want to experience life, but I think sitting and being safe now and preparing for the future is the best thing that you can do to just be compliant, basically. Final questions, two parts. Any idea what you want to specialize in and do you plan to come home to practice? Ooh, that's a really that's a really loaded question, Mr. Reed. Um all of my life actually I have I've always dreamt of studying in obstetrics and gynecology or somewhere along the side the lines of pediatrics. Um the fact that medicine itself is such a vast field. I think every semester I learn something new. I I, I consider myself practicing in that field. I consider myself or I think that maybe I can I can do it, but normally my heart still stays in objective in gynecology. So I'll see how it goes because honestly, every day that the new statistics and information comes up with that COVID nineteen, it's very interesting. And I so privileged that I get to study things in real time because that's the type of person I am. I like to be on the move. I like to study things in real time. So this if he, right here is a privilege. Um, do I think that I'll ever come back home and practice? I I would really, really love to. My heart is the Bahamas. Like like people say, like I'm born, bred, and the dead Bahamian. But I, I really, I, I'm, I always keep abreast of what's happening in, in the country. And it seems as if right now, maybe for young Bahamians who want to return, especially in the field of medicine, mm -hmm. right now, in this present time, in our in our history that we're making, it seems as if it's not so feasible to come back and practice. I've had some of my friends who are in the field tell me, you know, 
maybe stay away, get your degree and get your your, your credentials abroad and then come back home because then it'll be easier for you. Well, well a good thing, Daviel, is that no matter where you are, you're Bahamian and you could be flying the flag. We wish you all the best. Okay. We have to end the interview right now, regrettably, but um, God bless you and um, um, do well. And be safe. And be safe. <laughs> Thank you so much. You too. Take care. We'll have more for you after this.